in my lab, we use flames to make nanoparticles. The same way a candle makes black nanoparticles deposited on a white plate is the way we also use in our laboratory to make smart nanoparticles for biomedical applications. Drug-resistant bacteria is a growing problem in healthcare. If bacteria infect wounds or form colonies on the surface, on medical devices or implants, they can cause serious infections. Georgios Sotiriou and his team at Karolinska Institute develop nanoparticles that can kill or inhibit the growth of bacteria. So the, really the uniqueness of nanotechnology for biomedicine lies at the really small size that makes it possible suddenly to have materials interacting with these really small biological entities that we have inside our bodies. To make the nanoparticles, the researchers use a method called flame synthesis. So this is the high-tech version of the candle. This is our flame reactor. Instead of a candle, the researchers ignite a spray with tiny droplets containing atoms of the materials for the nanoparticles. The particles are formed in the high temperature flame and get trapped in solid form in a filter above the flame where they can be collected. It's also possible to place medical devices in the top of the reactor and coat them with an antibacterial layer. By adjusting the flame, the size and the composition of the particles can be precisely controlled. Another advantage of this process is that we are very flexible in the composition of our materials. We literally look at the periodic table of elements and we choose the elements that we want to produce. And these particles might have different properties, like different color or different chemical properties or electronic properties. In the flame reactor, the researchers are making many different kinds of nanoparticles. Silver is one of the materials that the researchers are using. Put the ah, and this is the control, yes. One of the very powerful antimicrobial nanoparticles is silver. We call it nanosilver. But what we really try to do in our lab is control these properties of silver that are very important for its antibacterial uh, performance. So what we try to do is control the size, the way they dissolve, and uh, most importantly, we try to find ways to incorporate them in existing medical devices. That way, we can utilize and harness the powerfulness of this very antibacterial material and use it to inhibit bacterial infections in the human body. The nanoparticles can also be designed to perform tricks, like heat up when they are hit by near-infrared light. These light-activated nanoparticles can then be placed on fibers in wound dressings. So the way these devices could be used in the clinics is by applying, for example, these uh, patches on, uh, on the skin infection or on the wound, and uh, then the healthcare personnel comes to treat the patient with a simple flashlight that emits light at a specific wavelength that does not harm the human tissue and uh, just for a few minutes shine some light on these smart patches that is enough to kill the bacteria on that area and uh, reduce uh, the infection. But the use of nanoparticles in medicine doesn't stop with infection. Georgia Satirio's team is investigating other uses as well. Another way that we can use nanoparticles in biomedicine is to use them as drug nanocarriers. You see, there are several drugs that uh, when you inject them into the body, our body attacks them. So we need to find ways to protect these drugs in order to reach the target organ that we want them to treat. That's where the particles come in. By loading these drugs onto particles, we protect them from this degradation that happens inside the body and making it possible to reach the target organ and have the therapeutic outcome that we want. The goal is to bring the nanoparticles to the market and help patients in the clinics. A key to reaching this goal is the flame reactor, which makes it possible to produce nanoparticles on an industrial scale. And now when we talk about nanoparticles for biomedicine and nanoparticles in general for that matter, one of the major bottlenecks that we have today is that uh, it's quite difficult to make large quantities of nanoparticles with reproducible properties over different batches. 
Another important key to success is a close collaboration between experts in nanotechnology and medicine. So ever since I set up my laboratory here at Karolinska Institute, I have been discussing with my clinical colleagues and biologists, trying to identify important medical challenges where materials and nanotechnology can offer innovative solutions. Because when you try to tackle a problem, bringing two disciplines or more disciplines together and working at the interface, very often we have highly innovative solutions to existing challenges that have not been solved before. 